Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you had a lovely evening yesterday night. Uh, we have here the first presenter of the day. It's a colleague of mine. She's a prevention officer at the anti fraud Office of Catalonia. She has been be behind the design and the implementation of corruption surveys that our institution has carried out. Uh, she's also uh, the officer in charge of the monitoring of actions and uh, recommendations that we made at the office. Actually, we brought the topic yesterday, and uh, I'm sure she's going to make a very interesting presentation on, on the relationships between the anti-fraud office and the work it carries in the public and the private sector. So I give the floor to my colleague, uh, Mark Cardona. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marisa. Hello, everybody, and thanks for coming today. First of all, um, my presentation will focus on the institution, our institution, and its general, general functions. In second hand, I will focus the presentation in the prevention functions. And finally, I will expose you what we do in private sector. So let's begin. Well, our institution was created by law in 2008, and the creation of the anti-fraud office fulfills for the first time uh, in Spain the, man the mandate of the um, Section 6 of the United Nations against corruption. And it guarantees for the first time also the existence of a specialized and independent body church with preventing corruption functions. Uh, the Anti-Fraud Office enjoys of budgetary autonomy, and we are organized in three parts, prevention, analyze, and investigation. So the Anti-Fraud Office comes under the parliament, which, which legitimates us and guarantees our independence to carry out equally and effectively the functions uh, that are entrusted to, to, to it, to the office. The Anti-Fraud Office is created as a public law entity with legal personality and full capacity to act, reporting directly to the Parliament and acts independently of the government departments in the exercise of his functions relating with the government and local entities. Our two big functions are, uh, I, as I said, to prevent and to investigate, and we give advices and recommendations. The purpose of our office is to prevent and to investigate specific or potential cases of illegal use or uh, allocation of public funds or any other irregular appropriation arising from acts that involve a conflict of interest or the profit of uh, private benefits of information <coughs> deriving from the inherent functions of the personnel in the service of the public sector. Furthermore, the office includes uh, functions functions as providing advice and making recommendations for the adoption of measures against corruption, fraudulent practices, and behavior that is in breach of integrity and transparency. In general, at the office, we study and promote good practices in relation with transparency in public management and prevention of corruption, so as to assist to, to improve the quality in the provision of public service. We provide advice and we formulate proposals to the government of Catalonia to fight against corruption. We also can collaborate at the request of the parliament, of the parliament with the investigation committees in drawing up uh, verdicts on matters in which there are signs of irregular use of uh, public funds. However, the Anti-Fraud Office has the limited functions because its functions are in all cases taken uh, without prejudice of the General Inspectorate the, um, 
Ombudsman Accounts Inspectorate uh, Code Auditors. Um, the the anti-fraud office must, however, collaborate and cooperate with them, with the judicial authorities and the public uh, prosecutors and the other controlling institutions. Our sphere of action, as you can see, is very big. It is centralized in public sector. And we can work with local entities and universities, always respecting its um, autonomy. In addition, we can work with foundations, with consortia, with subcontractors, with, with private entities. As you can see, each alert is free of action. I would like to talk to you about the figure of the director of our office because it's capital in our institution. The um, office is headed by a director chosen by the parliament who must exercise the post with fully independence and objectivity. That means he can't be affiliated to any political party, trade union, or business association. He, he does not receive instructions from any authority in the exercise of the functions, but acts in all cases to, to subject it to the law. His mandate is, is nine years, and he, it's, he cannot be renewed. The position of the directors is not compatible with any other activity. Yesterday, my colleague Bruno presented you some information about our investigation proceeds. I would like to tell you something more. The um, actions of the anti-fraud office always begins ex officio by an agreement of the director by its own initiative or as a result of a complaint. So uh, let me show you s uh, some data that will be of your interest. In 2014, we received 162 complaints. That means more or less 1,700 from our creation. The profile of our compliance is uh, 90 is 16% private, 26% political parties, 6% public servants, and 3% trade unions. In fact, the majority of our compliance are, really, are, refer, are referred to local entities, 15% to government of the Generalitat, and 7% to private institutions. As you can see, we first do a prior determination of plausibility, or, we, or in other words, the analysis of truthfulness of the, of the compliant. So the director decides where to initiate an investigation or shelve the case. The investigation phase are formed by um, a successive agreement of notifications, reports, um, veredicts, documents, uh, physical documents, uh, all we can consider useful for our investigation. Then we have the results of the investigation. The investigation can fin finalize or can end by four, four types. The first, when we see evidence of wrongdoing, we can send it to the prosecutor's office or the judicial authorities. That means when the facts could be considered as a criminal features. On the second hand, when we detect administrative irregularities, we can communicate it to the, per to the pertinent uh, body so that so he can initiate or penalizing the, the actuation or the facts. On the third hand, May we can find there is no sanctionable behavior, but the anti-fraud office can consider it to make some preventive recommendations. And finally, if, if there is an absence of support, of, if there is an absence of evidence of wrongdoing, we just save the case. The case. In all these procedures, 
we can adopt preventive measures as a request of the director. And we um, take care of our whistleblowers. The anti-fraud office has to provide the assistance and the advice to the persons who complain or report in good faith. If the anti-fraud office learns that anybody compliant has been directly or indirectly subjected to acts of intimidation or reprisals, the director has to exercise before the competent authority the required corrective or restablishment uh, of measures. On the other hand, we can uh, provide the reservation of identity if anybody compliant or reporting facts uh, wishes it, we can um, undertake their identity. All these processes are um, monitoring by some principles, congruency, necessity, and proportionality, and, of course, speed of response, ec economy, simplicity, efficacy, and discretion. All this cycle, all this project is closed in the face of monitoring of actions that will be explained later. So, how we do prevention? We can do <coughs> prevention in these spheres, you can see. It's a, a big sphere to prevent. And we provide support to public organizations in the process of building their own in integrity system through the actions in the following areas that I will explain. We do training. The Anti-Fraud Office runs courses and training aimed at identifying risks of corruption and providing tools and, strengthen and, oh, sorry, and strategies to minimize these risks. Um, a data you may interest in since 2010 to today, the Anti-Fraud Office reaches 1,100 participants, more or less. In this sense, our training program are, aim, are aimed to lend support to other bodies in the implementation of training work in the sphere of ethics and integrity control of corruption in public and private bodies. Here you can see, maybe you know this hexagon. Our system is based in six working areas organized by three axes. The first, the advice and guide people according to public ethics. On the second hand, guaranteeing the integrity in management proceeds. And uh, finally, strengthen institutional integrity. About our functions of regulations, the elaboration at the different office, we consider that the elaboration of the laws and regulations has a very high impact on citizens. So, the law and the regulations should incorporate prevention measures when they are being elaborated. Because once it, the, the law is entering in force, the, the regulation belongs to the legal system and we have to be compliant with it. That's why the Anti-Fraud Office participates on the draft regulation, because this task reinforces legitimacy, democratic control, increases citizens' trust in institutions, and improves the final quality of the regula regulations. In general, in this area, we provide advice and formulate proposals to, and recommendations to the Parliament or the Government of the Generalitat. When we submit comments to a regulation or to a law, we identify the regulation as our interest and we analyze the justification or the need for the regulation. We analyze the promoting authority, the regulation rank, the enhanced interest, compatibility with anti-corruption standards, and we analyze a comparative law. Our assessment in law contains corruption risks, coherence of the whole project, how the administrative authority is exercised, the undue burdens, 
transparency and access to information, accountability, control functions, appeals, responsibility, and terminology. We do a final report, and during the elaboration of all this process, we published, we published it at our website. About our function of consulting, public bodies and privates can formulate non-binding consultations or queries to our office. The non-binding consultations are a type of collaboration with other institutions. We have to respond to, to inquiries from public institutions on issues like conflict of interest, the interpretation of the procedural rules or public administrations, and the resolution of ethical dilemmas, another situation that may affect an authority. In the field of education, we have a program called Me, Yes, I Do. Um, education is a priority for the anti-fraud office, and, why, and that is why we consider an ambitious project aimed at very young people through the education system. The program is based on the recognition and promotion of social values that promote institutional integrity, honesty, and transparency. Now we are in the phase of the diffusion of the educational resources after the pilot phase. As Marisa said, we do research, we do surveys at the Antifraud Office. During our existence, we had made three surveys on perception of corruption. The first one, one was in 2010, and let me tell you that it was the first survey in Catalonia carried out uh, focused on the perception of corruption. Our objectives when we do surveys are the first to obtain uh, objective data from people non expert in the material on corruption issues. On the second hand, we wanted to know the attitudes of the citizens towards corruption as a social phenomenon, and the more or little importance they, are, they give to this aspect. And we wanted to find out also about social values. Third, the aim of the survey was to raise awareness, and finally, we wanted to compare the, the, um, the evolution between the corruption per perception through the years. Let me tell you also that concerning private sector, we asked about this question. Does economic groups have an undue influence on public decisions? 94% responds very and quite a lot. And when we asked about the main responsible in a case of, of corruption between a public institution and a, a private and a company, 15% responds, the main responsible is the private company. 20% responds both, and 60% responds the public institution. On the other hand, the Ernest and Young fraud surveys of this year shows that in Spain, for the 69% corrupt practices happen widely. For the 34%, offering gifts to win business is justifiable to help business to survive. And for 50%, and for companies often report financial performance better than it is. So here you can see in which context we are working. Finally, at prevention, we do the monitoring of, of actions. In order to check if the public institutions are applying our, our administrative, financial, legislative, judicial, or disciplinary measures that we have recommend, we can follow, we can monitor these aspects. <clears throat> our monitor functions are divided into monitor of regulation projects and monitor of investigations completed. About the monitor of regulation projects, please bear in mind that prior assessment is not my mandatory in any case. So, so it, 
that is the way to express our su suggestion is, is reduced to this to this field about the monitor of investigations these tasks consist on checking whether the measures has, have been applied by the competent authorities to do so the anti-fraud office can remind uh, to the highest authority um, the request of the submission of a plan of implementing the recommendations or suggestions or if they are not having applying it why transparency finally is one of the highest aspirations of, of the office for this reason we publicize the process from the start of it in our website you can find available our, all our recommendations and its following So, what do we do in private sector? Why um, the anti-fraud office fight against corruption in private sector too? We think that market economy can't be developed in a context of deficient governance that threaten fair competition Tools combating corruption at public or private sector are now so different. We think that penal law has limits when corruption is systemic. Penal law, penal or criminal law is efficient when corruption is accidental, not systemic. But when it is institutionalized, it is not efficient. It is essential for companies to establish and develop a culture of ethics and integrity and to develop the values standards incentives and transparent procedures the companies has the interest in strengthening the preventive measures because of its own business nowadays in spain there is no legal obligation to have a compliance program in other areas like health or safety it is very different from other countries so if companies make prevention corruption is because they have a lot of interest in it not for ethical reasons so how to find to fight uh, against corruption prevention we think is first to repression prevention is difficult to measure however it's an important point to raise awareness in ethic values there are a lot of methods to fight against corruption and it depends on political social and economic context in criminal matters evaluation of prevention is hardly visible at the end and quantifiable if we don't put it in relation with the penalties in court that's why we think compliance is a kind of guarantee for the future anyway the benefits of the implementation of an ethic compliance program are learned from the anti-fraud office as you heard we do training in ethics and values raise awareness in the establishment of self-regulation mechanisms in order to prevent irregular practices in private sector we do legislation we promote the drawing up of rules in procedures aimed at preserving the integrity of private companies including standards of corporate social responsibility and ethical business management codes for example the anti-fraud office made relevant comments on the regulation of the lobby register in catalonia which let me tell you is the first and the pioneer register of lobbies in spain we from the office promote also cooperation agreements with the private companies in the sphere of training of the personnel. Now I'm going to show you some different aspects we have do in the, in the office with the private sectors. As you know, the Global Compact made a system for managing integrity and transparency in small and medium-sized enterprises, and we collaborate with them. This is the first tool, the system, 
is the first tool in Spain for detecting the risk of corruption and the first tool which provides the information for implementing a prevention corruption system. This tool has three big features. The first is aimed at small and medium-sized enterprises. It's a system that, di that diagnoses and puts solution to the bad practices that are be being carried out. And third, is developed in a working collaborative platform. In this order, users are provided of innovation of ideas, measurement of social impact of for its corporations. We think it's a very important tool because enterprises has a responsibility with the social and has to work for more transparent economy. They have a responsibility also. With Transparency International, we, we have done something too. Um, we organized a seminar workshop with aim to provide a debate and reflections towards a capital matter in democratic fun functioning, that is loving practicing. The session was uh, part of the research of a project. We are involved in it. And it was sponsored with the European Union too. During this meeting, attendants could agree that there are a lot of risks of corruption when the activity is done without sufficient transparency and integrity. So the regulatory framework uh, was analyzed and we shared a comparative perspective on different laws. We discussed some concrete experiences and we discussed to the incentives for the introduction of corporate policies for responsible lobbying and eventual self-regulation of those who make lobbies lobby against institutions. I remind you that Catalonia has the first initiative to implement a register of lobbies, but only in Catalonia. The approach of the seminar was very practical, and we had some questions that were not response. Maybe you can give us a response. We share some doubts about lobby register in Catalonia. If entities are not registered, could they make lobby as well? And what is more important, the potential impact of the register in the influence activity. May you have a register in your countries and you can explain your, your experience. With Transparency International, we supported the principles of Transparency International to Prevention Corruption for Enterprises that will be explained this afternoon, so I, I, I don't stop in it about <clears throat> the international and national legal framework. Yesterday, you may heard something about our legal framework, so I apologize if I repeat and I, I will be brief. <clears throat> you know well the OCDE convention. I would like just to say that the convention provides us with a solid framework an effective system to prohibit bribery for foreign officials. The convention requires the parties to cooperate in carrying out its recommendations. That's why the last recommendation implementation was this year, in March, and the conclusions for the chapter of Spain was the following. Spain has not fully implemented recommendations related to raising awareness and providing training on the liability of legal persons. No efforts have been taken to raise awareness among prosecuting authorities about the liability of legal persons for foreign bribery. So that, that were the conclusions of this year in Spain. About the United Nations against corruption, I would like to say that, as you know it, I won't stop in it, it provides a global framework for combating corruption with a much broader scope than the OCDE Convention. 
the, province, the provisions of the conventions are not self-executing and require governments to pass new legislation to build a strengthen organizations and provide them with the adequate fund, funds and staff. In this convention, we have an article dedicated to preventive anti-corruption policies and practices that requi requires governments to develop anti-corruption policies that reflect the rule of law, integrity, transparency, and accountability. Periodic evaluations are called for determining the adequacy of anti-corruption measures. A provision in private sector is, is on the convention too. It calls for governments to take measures to prevent corruption in private sector, including enhanced accounting and auditing standards, codes of conduct, prevention of conflict of interest, restrictions on employment for former, former public officials, internal controls, etc. Now we have the ESO 19600, which is an international standard, may you know too. The anti-corruption anti works are developed in an international level with the technical committees. This is a ESO standard called Compliance Management System Guidelines. It's a standard of recommendations and it's inspired by the Australian standard is focused on helping entities to design, apply, maintaining, and improve a system of compliance management. Now, I think they are working on a new ESO in anti bribery management system, focused on corruption prevention and detection according to the law. This standards comes up with the idea to be an instrument or tool for helping entities to carry out anti-corruption proceedings and proof the entity having anti-corruption efficient controls. We will see the results. About the Spanish criminal code, yesterday you hear a lot of it, so I think I wouldn't repeat. And Finally, yesterday you heard too about these important elements. Our colleague is, uh, explained that they are capital. So I will not explain them, but let me say you something about them. What the Antifraud Office thinks about a compliance program and his big benefits. The compliance programs for the Antifraud Office provide the company with a management tool, helps to reduce reputational risks, which can threaten even the existence of the company reputational risk, as we see yesterday, and means an investment for the company in the meaning of its relation with the shareholder, the clients, and a compliance program supposed a very high source of competitiveness. That's why from the anti-fraud office, we lend support to this prevention corruption system. So I think that it's all for my part. Did you have any question? Uh, hello. <coughs> Uh, in your experience, um, what do you think, uh, how willing uh, are Spanish entrepreneurs to talk about uh, the subject of corruption? Uh, are they, do they talk about it freely or uh, more uh, reluctantly? Thank you. Well, I think things are changing today. The issue of corruption is, um, is higher, the scandals are higher, are more. So they have having conscience of the importance of the anti-corruption measures and, pre and prevention. So little by little, I think we can achieve a new culture of transparency and culture of ethics.
Um, your office is only in region Catalonia. Uh, is in Spain also such mm -hmm. same uh, authorities like yours? No, we are the only one in, in Spain in this field. More autonomies, you know, Spain is divided in autonomies. Other autonomies are talking about creating ones, but we are the first one in Spain, the only one, in fact. Yeah, ju just to point out that there is a Spanish pr public prosecutor office uh, specialized in corruption and organized crime that uh, is in Madrid, but uh, an office with this double mission of prevention and investigation um, of this nature, it's only here in, mm -hmm. in Catalonia. Yes, we can say we are pioneer on this structure. Let's put it this way. Okay. So we close this uh, first presentation and we are going to do a round table here just now with uh, newcomers. And that is going to be moderated by my colleague, uh, Teodoro Frank, the director of the investigation department of the Anti-Fraud Office of Catalonia. Thank you, Mar. Thanks a lot for Thank your presentation. You. Thank you.